Hello guys, this is me, Hannah Bile, and I'm showing you how to look at the info for your file. See, so I click on info here, and you see the title Computer Science and Internet for that folder in the spotlight comments. Now you have your general, shows you what kind of folder you use, the size, and whatnot. Then you have your label with the colors of the folder that you want to put. You can either share your folder. Or keep it locked. More info tells you when you last open it, like it popped up there. Then you have your name, the preview of the folder. You could double click it to see what's inside. And at the bottom is where you have sharing permissions. You can lock it or not lock it. So you gotta put in your password to make the changes. Or keep it as that. Hello again, and I will be showing you how to create a smart folder. You go down here, click on the Finder. In the Finder, you see your contacts, events, and your PDF files, and all your documents, music, and whatnot. As you can see, how I'm showing you. Let me come back up to the top for a moment. Now, uh, on the right, you can see this little search box. You type in whatever you want to look for, your PDF files or your document that you recently just put in and you wanted to type it for a quick access. Now, the file names you can see, you want to click. It says file name contains events from the past two weeks and it's highlighted in blue. Now, you see you can switch from this Mac to all files for the search engine. And on your right, you can save it or create a new save file. Now I'm going to type the same name again. Okay, you see where in the drop box I have it saved searches or you could put it where you prefer and mostly everyone prefers to put it on a desktop. It's easy access. So I will click on um, desktop and I'm going to save now you see a purple folder showed up with the gear sign that is your smart folder you can double click on it and all the files that you look for or search for you can put in here for easy access or you can see it on the sidebar down below as I'm showing you right now Hello, I'm showing you how to make a stack. And for those who don't know, a stack is another way to make easy access to your files or movies or whatever you hold in your folder. You see how I drag that folder to the desktop, from the desktop to the dock, excuse me. And it pops up showing you what's inside that folder. Now I'm going to click on the finder and it pops up. Okay, clicking in, and this here shows you if you want to sort all the files by name, date added, date modified, date created, and kind. It's also you can view the contents in the fan like that. You can also choose grid right here. There's another option of choosing list. If you prefer a list, you can choose list. If not, you want a surprise each time, you can always click back and go to automatic. But I prefer fan. As you can see. If you think that you have the wrong folder, you can always click on it and drag it and it'll poof, be gone. You drag the the folder that you need or the folder that you want to be on your dock. And it shows you the same thing. And that is how you make a stack.
Okay, I will show you how to use the dock. The dock you can put all your applications that you want or that you need for easy access. As you can see, I'm going to click on the applications and it shows you. And I will choose which one, like the DVD player. If you want to have instant access when you pop in the DVD to watch late night so, or group, so whoever you have over. And drag it and put it on your dock and it automatically sits. Just like you see all my other applications I have down below. You can open it. Give it a minute. There you go. And you see, it pops up automatically. You can either keep it on your dock, and if you don't want it on your dock anymore, you want to control click, and you can go to options, and remove from dock, open that login, or show in finder. Now with open login, it allows you allows you to uh, let the application open open up as soon as that you log in into your profile. And that is how you use the doc. Using force quit. Using force quit is when all the applications is not responding. If you're stuck or you using too many applications at once or clicking all buttons at once and it freezes up for a little bit and you try to decide to quit as you see I couldn't make it have the little force quit sign but if for some reason the application starts responding as I'm trying to make it do but that's fine you could just control click and force quit as you see right here Instead of it being quit, it'll be force quit. Hello, this is how we're going to present you uh, using the spotlight. Now, if you look in the right hand corner of your screen, there's a little magnifying glasses that is your spotlight as you can see I had computer science and internet up, up there you could we enter it if you wish or anything that's in your applications or in your files like right here you can show all in finder those helps you open up the um, files that contain as you can see I'm a Norris Roberts fan I love her it's my favorite author shows you the last day modified and now here's also show you the web pages that contains the contents that you typed in and also helps you with the web searches from web and also from wikipedia now you, you can also go to your spotlight preferences here is where you allow your spotlight to search through all your files if you prefer to stick here or you prefer some of your applications not to show up you can always come over here to your privacy and apply the applications that you don't want the spotlight to search in for example let's say music my music file I want to keep private you choose that and it'll tell you are you sure you want to prevent spotlight for searching it may exclude this location for spotlight searches it also might not work with other applications here you can use the shortcut menu you can choose which one or either same as below and that is how you use spotlight now everybody wants to increase their max security and you click here on this lovely little apple that's in your left side of your screen. You go, as you can see, to system preferences. Here is where you choose all your options. 
But right here, you want to go to security and privacy. So you know the house with this safety dial. Now, I'm in my privacy tab. That is the only one I'm let, allowed to have 24 access. It's Facebook, as you can see. My firewall is off. Power Vault secures the data on your disk. It helps you secure all your information. Now here you can change your password or let's say your screen goes to sleep and your screensaver. So you click and it automatically ask you for your password or you want to wait. Now as you see this gray little area, that is gray due to the lock that you see me click on. And you put in your password. As you can see me doing it unlocks this feature so it allow you to make the changes in the gray area such as advanced whip you log out due to inactivity or administrative password to access or all the other options that you see disable remote control and fair helps you pair that remote control right now I'm gonna just leave automatically install important security updates check and now lock it back setting your system preferences okay you can either click here in your system preferences or you can click on your apple up there in the corner now here is setting your system preferences you see all your options here, your personal hardware, internet, wireless system, and other. Now, you can click in the little search box with the magnifying glass. And as you type in password, it highlights all the options that you could choose that contains your password. As it also shows you the list. Now, if you don't want to look for your password, you can type in for your pictures. It also shows you the highlights of where you could look for pictures or share your pictures as you see even if not your pictures or you want to search for some devices as, such as a printer print and scan and sharing files and parental control shows up and pops up and then it's your system preferences now changing your desktop picture and back we all like our picture in the background of our laptops to show who our laptops about or who our loved ones is. You want to click in the same area or you can use your spotlight. If not the spotlight, you can use Finder or click at the Apple and choose system preferences, whichever you prefer. Now here you see Apple desktop pictures and solid colors. You can see eye photos of my pictures and folders that are pictures. My goddaughter I pick and choose. So I'm gonna close this right here. As you can see I changed the picture of her. Then I'll change it back to the one I had before that. I'm gonna click on desktop and screensaver again and I'm gonna drag it to the little box area and voila that is how you change your desktop picture and back this is energy saver options you could choose from your apple on the left and system preferences or from the dock below we could click on the main system preferences preferences excuse me or you can go to the battery life and at the battery life you can just automatically open straight to your energy saver options here it shows you your power adapter which i have on never and computer sleep and display sleep you can choose which one they both collide together and this the options that you can choose to see put your hard disk to sleep when possible wake up from network access and what's not or if not, you can just restore back to defaults. That's the schedule you can set up. 
Now, the battery life helps your computer to automatically switch. You know, if your battery life is draining too fast, you can put your computer to sleep and display sleep surfaces down lower. As you see, I locked it. It helps you not change your preferences or your options. And I'm going to keep it locked for a moment. To unlock it, you have to put your password back in. But I'm going to leave it locked. And that is your energy saver options.